Hi, this is a tutorial on major scales on the bass. Okay, so a major scale in music is basically defined by a preset interval structure. Okay, so when you play, uh, for example, a C scale on a piano, you know that you'd play all the white keys from one C to another. Um, same, you know, same is true for a bass. You'd start on a C and end on a C. Okay. Um, and the way you break up that space between this C and this C here is, um, you know, is the same for all major scales, where basically from the first note to the second note, it's a whole step. Okay, so it wouldn't be a half step, which is just one fret apart, but it's a whole step. Okay. So, just to play the whole scale, it would sound like this. Okay, but when you play that, you're playing a predetermined pattern. Okay, so from here to here, it would be a whole step. From here to here, it would be a whole step. From here to here, it would be a half step. You can see, because that was only one fret apart. And then from here to here, that would be a whole step. From here to here, that would be a whole step. From here to here, that would be a whole step. And then from here to here, that would be a half step. So it'd be origin and then whole, whole, half, and then whole, 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 half. So it's always going to be, when you're playing a major scale, the interval structure will always be whole step, whole step, half step, and whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay? So let's start um, going through all the keys in music right now. Um, we'll start with C, and then we'll go to G, and then D, and then A, so on and so forth, down the circle of fifths. Um, so that's C. Let me just say what the names of the notes are. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay. That's the way you would play it on a single string. Okay. Um, Depending on what you're doing, it might make more sense to play a bass line on a single string like that, as opposed to a single position, which would be more like this. You see, when I say single position, I'm saying that my hand is one location on the neck. And from that single location, I'm just using different fingers um, to play different notes. Okay, so if we played, again, if we played the single note or the single string uh, method for the C major scale, it would sound like this. If we played the single position method, it would sound like this. Okay, the exact same note, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We can also think of these notes as scale degrees. So instead of um, saying the names, the letter names of the notes, we could think of them also as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Same thing in the uh, position method of playing the major scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So if you can think of the major scale like this um, first, and then think about reading the notes on the staff second, I think you'll be in a better place. Um, sometimes when you start playing music, um, it's hard to understand what the big picture is, but I'm trying to tell you that right now, that when you play, you're basically playing scales, and you're basically upholding a set interval structure um, when you play those scales, and no matter what key you're in, that interval structure stays the same. So if you can understand that from the get-go, you'll be way ahead of the game. Um, and then once you understand that, then 
you know, if you can think of reading notes and sight reading as just being able to, you know, quickly identify locations on those scales, um, that'll make it easier. You know, that'll help answer the question why you're learning to read music. Um, you know, of course, there are other reasons to learn how to read music. It allows you to play melodies um, easier. It allows you to communicate with other musicians, and I also think it helps you create music. But that's for another video. Okay, so we just covered the C major scale. Now let's go ahead and cover the next scale on the list, the G major scale. Um, for now, we can just go ahead and start on the fourth string, third fret. That's a G. Okay? And again, we just can go ahead and use that exact same interval structure that we used for C, where I just say origin, or you know, the tonic, or the first note. They're all the same thing. So you have origin, then whole step, and then whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, and then you can do the reverse. Um, origin, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. That can also be played from a single position, and that looks like this. Um, I'll go slow. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. That's the G scale. Um, now, oh, one other thing too about the G scale. This is a scale where we have a sharp in it. Okay, when you, whenever you play the F note, you actually play F sharp, you don't play F. Okay, and at first that can seem kind of an ar like arbitrary, you know, why, why do you have to learn how to do that? Well, if you start on G, okay, for you to maintain that set interval structure of the major, of the major scale that we talked about, the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, well, most of the time, to execute that interval structure, you know, as an incidental byproduct, you're going to play sharps and flats, okay? But there's nothing, you know, special about those notes, okay? Um, you just have to play them just to uphold that primary interval structure, common to all major scales. Okay, so one more time, and then we'll move on, G major scale. Okay, one, two, three, four... Okay, and then the single position method. One, two, three, four. Okay. The next scale on the list is D major. Let's just quickly go through that. So D major, of course, your first note, we can just use the second string open. That's a D string. So that can be the note we start on, and then we can end on on uh, the high D, which is just 12 frets up. And that's another thing in bass and guitar. Um, you know, there's basically 12 frets between octaves. So, for example, if you wanted to play an octave of G sharp was your note, you want to play an octave of that, you just go ahead and play, so that's the first fret, so you'd play the 13th fret. All right, 13 minus 1, 12. Or if you wanted to play A, which is second fret, the octave would be here. 
or the 14th fret. So 14 minus 2 is 12. Okay. Uh, 13 minus 1, 12. Okay. And then 0, well, 12 minus 0, um, 12. Okay. So um, D major scale would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then to play that in a uh, single position method, we could play it in the fourth position. Okay, so when I when I say fourth position, all I mean is fourth finger is lined up over the fourth fret. Okay, and our D instead of playing its second string open will be third string, fifth fret. Okay, so that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. And then back down. One, two, three, four. Okay. And the scale degrees are would be this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. The next scale on the list is A major. Okay, so we can start with the third string open, which is A. Okay, and then we can end on the twelfth fret of that same string, which is also A, just an octave up. Okay, so to play that, um, scale, we just use the same interval structure as all of the other um, scales, and it would be like this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And if we played that same scale using the single position method, it would sound like this. And we could start on 4 string 5th fret. Okay. Um, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the next scale on the list is E. Okay, E is four string open. Okay, and uh, again, same interval structure. So here we go. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then reverse that. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And to play it in a single position, uh, we could use first position, and that would sound like this. And then descending. Okay, so this is a slightly different shape and pattern than what we've seen. Um, and part of the reason is because we're incorporating open strings. That makes it a little bit different. Okay, if we, you know, if we play like the A major scale using the same pattern, it would, sound, it would look like this. Okay, which is different than this this but they're all the same thing um, okay so to play um, to play E in the first position think of it almost as if you're 
index finger is kind of pressing where the nut is. Okay. Sorry. You see, and if you do that, then it really conforms to a shape that you move all over the neck. Okay. So that is E major. Um, let's keep going with the next scale on the list, B. Okay, so B is going to be third string, second fret. Okay, and that is, um, so that's our first note, and then this is our last note. Okay, so if you played B major on a single string, it would sound like this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then reverse. Okay, and then to play it off of a single position, it would look like this. Okay, so that is B major. Okay, um, the next scale on the list is F sharp major. Okay, so we would start on the fourth string, second fret, that's F sharp. And it makes sense because first fret of the same string is F. So one fret up from that would be F sharp. Okay. Um, again, same interval, interval structure as all the other keys. Um, origin. So origin, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay, and the same in reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then to play that uh, from a single position, it would look like this. I'll do that again. One, two, three, four. Scale degrees are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Um, we just have a few more to go here. Um, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Um, so C sharp would be this. Uh, third string, fourth fret, that's a C. Okay, so if we play that using the single string method, it would look like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then reverse. Okay, and then the single position method would look like this. One, two, three, four. going. G sharp major scale is the next scale on the list. G sharp um, is fourth string, fourth fret. Okay, so that would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then again, descending. Okay, scale degrees would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, and then to use the single position, it would be this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then one, two, three, four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. OK. 
Okay, and you can see this pattern that I'm using is a very common pattern used in bass. We have seen that in pretty much every key that we've done up until this point, right? And so I, I just played this. Um, I can use that same shape and pattern to play C. I can use it to play D. Okay, um, A. Okay. All right, the next scale on the list is D sharp. So, um, of course, the second string open is D, so it follows that D sharp is the first fret, the second string. Okay, so to play that scale using the single string method, um, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then reverse. Scale degrees would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's D sharp. Um, D sharp using the single position method would be here. We use fifth position. Okay, index finger lined up over the fifth fret. We lead with our middle finger, uh, sixth fret on the A string or the third string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let me do that again. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's D sharp. Um, A sharp is, well, we can use the A string. So if A, which is the third string, open, that's A then A sharp will be third string first fret. Okay, so to play this major scale, it would sound like this. Um, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in reverse uh, would go like this. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And to play that in a single position, uh, it would sound like this. So, yeah, that pattern is like most of the other patterns that we that we've used, except we're using open strings. So we incorporate the open strings in there. It's as if you're playing um, this key with your index finger off of the um, neck, so to speak, like a, in the zero fret range. Like it, it's, a, it's as if your index finger is the same as the bridge pressing down on the strings at that point. Okay. So you could certainly do that to keep continuity um, between the other keys, but um, if you play it like this, that's not a problem. I mean, certainly is easier since you're using your index finger uh, more prominently. Um, okay, so that is the A sharp scale, uh, the last scale that we'll be covering in this video is F major scale. So F um, is third, well, fourth string, first fret. Okay. And we'll end on the 13th fret of the same string. 
okay and the interval structure is like everything else that we've done so f f major would sound like this one two three four one two three four five six seven eight and then reverse one two three four five six seven eight one more time one two three four one two three four five six seven eight set okay so ascending and descending okay to play f major from a single position we could use first position so that would be this uh, one two three four Okay, so again, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it's all, you know, it's all the same stuff. Um, major scale, uh, regardless of what key you're in, you're always using the same interval structure. And as you can see, in doing that too, that you use a lot of the same patterns and shapes too. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Okay, thanks. Bye.